We're going to start now the ask me anything so as the title is stated you can literally ask me anything i'm going to be reading the questions in the comments okay the first question is can generational curses be broken Wait, reigning glory asks absolutely generational curses can be broken the way we break curses is the same way we cast out demons by our words our words have power and the way that you break a curse is the words there's the power of life and death in the tongue and so the same way like a word curse is established a word curse could be broken curses are referenced over 250 times in the bible it's a biblical thing i know people debate this oh curses aren't real jesus broke the power of sin the curse of sin so there's other curses that are still in our life there is generational curses that people still deal with and here's the crazy part someone sent me an article just a few days ago about somebody writing about how diseases and addictions and things are passed down in your bloodline this was a secular article published by a medical journal and they said in their article that diseases addictions and things are passed down through the bloodline and i scratched my head when i read this because i thought the world believes in generational curses but the church does it and the bible does talk about your the sins of the father being passed down it is a biblical reality it is a real thing generational curses do exist i broke one off of my life that god revealed to me many people have them and many people need to break them okay should pastors be on a salary well according to the bible yes the bible says that if a ox is out there treading he should be able to eat you know he's tilling the field he should be able to eat so don't muzzle the ox let the ox eat paul said if i'm sowing into you spiritually should i not be reaping a physical harvest if i'm working in the temple doesn't the people that work in the temple get to eat what's in the temple so absolutely the bible supports pastors being paid paul said paid traveling teachers especially well and to be supported by the gospel is a biblical thing the bible says those that preach the gospel should also be supported by the gospel so absolutely it's a real thing what bible school did you go to remember this is ask me anything so you could literally ask me anything it doesn't have to be just one thing i went to kcli that's kingdom covenant leadership institute i have a bachelor's degree in theology i went to a satellite school it's based in canada but i got accredited in the u.s through a satellite school and that is dr pat francis is the director of the school i don't know what it's doing now but yes i got a bachelor's i was actually going for a master's and i just stopped because it was a really time consuming i was writing like 12 page papers every few weeks and so i got my bachelor's degree and that's probably it i don't know if i'll go back to um go back to bible college or anything like that can you break a soul tie on behalf of your spouse i don't know that you can break soul ties on behalf of other people i would i would say that you'd have to do it yourself because it's like you can't make somebody get delivered you can't make somebody be saved so you can pray for them and intercede for them but i don't know that you can break um break soul ties on yourself big sis said what is your thoughts on studying too much theology is it dangerous to study too much theology in my opinion yes my opinion is this if you become so head knowledge and knowing all about god like the pharisees did they knew all the laws they knew the, the um all the scriptures yet they didn't know the messiah when he came this is what we're going through in romans they thought by learning the scripture by doing all the rituals that they were saved and they were spiritual and they were christian and it did the adverse effect they knew so much that they missed the messiah when he came so should we know theology yes theology is the study of god ology is the study of theo is god so theology is the study of god i think it's great to study theology i think it's good to know theology but when you know so much and you're not a practitioner it creates pride it puffs up my question for guys that are very deep in theology is that is there actual fruit in your life and when i mean fruit i mean evidence in your life that you are a christian are you doing the work that's what i like to say i like i enjoy being around people that do the work i don't just want to hang around people that know it i want to hang around people that are doing it so what what is the benefit of knowing all these things but never practicing so i i'm leery about a lot of guys on youtube that all they teach is theology 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 but there's no evidence in their life that they're doing the work they're just teaching theology non-stop and i'm going like jesus was very practical he didn't just theology 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 but he was actually out doing the work, killing the sick, casting out demons, preaching the gospel. And so I believe we need both. So I think it is dangerous if we're only getting into theology and everything we say goes over people's heads. I think there needs to be practical um, application. Do you think people that got the V, I can't say the word because they'll literally flag my video, but it starts with a V um, and it's a shot that goes in your arm. Do you think that they are demonized? No, I do not think they are demonized. No. Are nose piercings bad? Mia said, I don't think they are inherently bad. I just think you need to go by your conviction of what the Holy Spirit says to do. It doesn't say not to get nose piercing. So um, can any 
believer, can anyone believer baptize? I think that's what you're asking, Toby. So can anyone baptize somebody? And the answer is yes. The religious guard says, no, you got to go through Bible college, but that's not what the Bible says. So absolutely, you can baptize. You don't need to be accredited. You don't need to go through Bible college. You can baptize somebody. And here's the kicker. You can do it in your bathtub. People don't realize this, but you can baptize somebody in your bathtub. It doesn't have to be a special event. You can absolutely baptize people. When is your rap song coming out? Hazel said, oh man, I don't know, guys. I really do want to do, I would really like, I know this sounds so cringe. It's, it sounds when I say it, but I would really like to try. I don't know. I think it'd be fun to do like one feature or something just like to try to rap, but I'd have to have my cousin Z like teach me first. And then he would have to be, I would have to do it. And then he'd have to be like, nah, cousin, that's not the one. Like he would have to straight up tell me like, this is trash. Don't rap or be like, this is good. Cause I'm not going to be one of those Christian rappers. That's terrible. But because they're Christian, everybody says they're good. No, we're not doing that. If it's bad, just tell me and I'll never try again, but I would like to try someday. So I don't know. I'll never say never. Cause it definitely could happen. Okay. Someone said, can we pray our pets into heaven? I just lost my dog today. I love your ministry. Oh man. Don't make me answer this one. I just lost my dog today. Love your ministry. Also homeschooling opinion. Okay. So sister combo, I'm sorry that you lost your dog. Uh, my heart goes out to you. This is my personal belief. Please, please don't unfollow me and put me on a spigot or anything like that. I might be wrong. And I hope for your sake that I am wrong. My personal belief is there's no scripture, first of all, saying animals go to heaven. There is animals in heaven symbolically, but it doesn't mean your dog or your cat goes to heaven. So it doesn't say in the Bible. So they might be there. I'm just saying I can't say definitively, but my personal opinion, please, I still love you if you don't agree with me and all that. My personal opinion is that animals do not have souls that can be redeemed like humans do. So my personal belief is and conviction is that animals, pets, dogs, cats, your pet, uh, parrot, whatever, your salamander, whatever it is you have, is that they don't go to heaven. I can't imagine, but I could be wrong. I just personally don't believe we're going to get to heaven. There's going to be like a billion, a trillion dogs, um, cats everywhere, and it's just going to be like a zoo. That's my personal belief. But again, my heart goes out to you. I believe when animals die, they go back to the dust. You know what I mean? They just, it is what it is. There's no redeemable soul there for them to be saved. But I would, uh, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. That's just my personal opinion. Okay. Um, can a Christ follower have a glass of wine, but not get drunk? Jennifer, that's a good question. A follower of Christ can have whatever they want. The question isn't, can I have it? The question is, what benefit does it, is it in my life? So the drinking has been highly debated. I have a video on the channel about drinking. My, I got delivered from drinking. Okay. I was drinking almost every day. I was addicted. And the moment I got saved, the Holy Spirit's like, don't drink, right? Convicted me, delivered me and set me free from the desire. So I'm, I'm always wondering why would God allow you or be okay with you doing something? And, and he delivered me from it. Why would God take that desire from me? Why wouldn't God just say, oh, drinking's not wrong, but I, I got radically delivered from it. Drinking has no health benefits. It's not, it's no, does nothing good. There's no benefits in it, right? Some people say, well, if I drink a little glass of wine is good for my heart. Well, yeah. Also not eating fast food is good for your heart. Also, you know, exercising is good for your heart going on a treadmill. So you don't need a glass of wine to be healthy. I personally am very highly convicted that drinking is a sin. Again, I have video and verses on my video on it. I won't rehash it, but you have to go by your conviction, but I do believe that drinking is not for kings and queens and priests, as the Bible says, strong drink and wine is all an alcoholic beverage is considered strong drink. And you might say, well, in the Bible, this, the Bible, that, uh, it was different back then, but yeah, that's my take on it. So no, I'm a big, huge capital NO on drinking. I will not partner with, do ministry with people that drink alcohol. <clears throat> it's a big, big no, no for me. Okay. When did you start your YouTube channel? Please answer. I'm glad you asked. I will answer. I started my YouTube channel in 2011 and I didn't really upload or take it serious until um, obviously beginning of 2020, but I didn't take YouTube serious until October of 2020. So until then, I had never made a thumbnail. I never did like the good titles, the descriptions, editing, none of that. It was just drop whatever content I had on there and then move on. October of uh, 2020, I took it serious. And that's really when I would consider I started on YouTube, but I made the channel in 2011 when I got saved to upload some house videos, which are still around floating around somewhere. I have a lot of them privated. Maybe one day I will unprivate one of them and post it because I do have me preaching like after being saved only a few months in the, in the, uh, on my YouTube channel. Okay. Let's see. 
What does it mean to repent? It actually means to change the way that you think. Knight of Knights. Someone says, what does it mean to repent? It means to change the way you think. And in changing the way you think, you change directions. To me, repentance is saying, I'm wrong about life. I'm wrong about sin. I'm wrong about pride. I'm wrong about everything. God, you're right. And I want to follow you. That's repentance. It's changing the way you think, metanoia, changing the way you think and changing directions and following after Jesus, Acts 2.38. Peter said, you must repent. The Bible says that God overlooked sin in the past and ignorance, but now requires all men everywhere to repent. So every single person, some say it's a work. It's not a work. Every single person is required to repent. There's no getting around it. Everybody's required to repent. What was your scariest experience in life? Laser says, probably if I could say one time where it was the scariest experience ever, it was one eye. I have the testimony on my channel of this. When I accidentally hung myself at 12 years old, if you don't know the story, I did accidentally hunt. Well, I didn't, it, it was un, unintentional, but I hung myself and I had a big chain rope in a b large metal barn and I was hanging on the rope, the chain rope. It was used to pull, you know, engines out of cars and stuff. And I was hanging like this with my hands here, swinging on this rope, pretending to be an American outlaw because I just watched the movie. And my cousin was in the barn, my cousin left. And the next thing I know, I wake up and I'm, I don't know how many feet off the ground, but enough to where my feet were off the ground. The chain, I had passed out like this and my hands fell and the chain tightened around my neck, spun me up into the air. I woke up in the air, I'm in the air, uh, with a chain, metal chain around my neck in a barn that's probably 20 feet tall, 15 feet tall. And I looked down and I remember it was like, everything was dark and I was almost like an out of body experience. And I thought, well, I must be dead. And then I felt the softest hands. All I could explain is this, the softest hands I've ever felt put, put, put their hands, whether it was an angel, I believe it was an angel, but put its hands in the rope pulled the chain rope open, which is impossible to do because it was tightened up. I fell to the ground, onto my knees, crawled to the corner of the barn, still things were black and blue. I was pounding on the pavement because I couldn't breathe. I was bleeding off my neck and I looked back and the chain was still tightened up to the top of the barn. And I knew in that moment there was a war going on. Something was trying to kill me and something saved me. Obviously it was an angel of the Lord that had saved me that day. But that was probably definitely the scariest moment of my life. There was other times where I almost died. Um, even just several months before I got saved, there was a voice telling me to jump off of a 13 story hotel and it was overwhelming. I'd never been suicidal in my life, never wanted to take my life. And the voice kept telling me, just jump off the balcony, just jump off the balcony. I was extremely drunk. And another voice told me, go lay down, go lay down. And thank God I went and laid down and I'm here today, but I got saved several months after that. And I can name story after almost drowning, falling out of a car, uh, to, I believe on two different occasions, getting drug under a tractor. I mean, occasion after occasion, alcohol poisoning, where the doctor said, you're like four times over what your body can handle. You should be dead. And obviously the prayers of my parents and the prayers of my grandparents and the prayers of my family keeping me alive. So yeah. All right, Cornerstone Project says, why don't you grow a beard? I did have a lot of facial hair and I, I, I didn't shave for like a week and a half and I was tempted to stream because I had like a lot of facial hair. And yeah, I was like, maybe I should stream and just kind of freak everybody out. But I, I didn't, I bailed and shaved. I got scared and shaved. But yeah, I don't have facial hair because my thinking is, and I could be wrong, but for me personally, I'm so close to the camera. You could literally see my pores. Like it's just, we're right there. So to have like hair and more stuff to think about and look at, this close to the camera, I don't know. Not a huge fan of it personally for me, so I probably, I don't know, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll grow my hair, my facial hair out someday, but not right now. Right now, we're gonna keep it shaved every day. Um, What is the rapture? The rapture is when Christ takes his people, we meet him in the air, and then we return with him to the earth in the second coming. That is the rapture. There's a big debate whether the rapture happens before the tribulation, in the middle, and at the end. I, for years, my whole life, pretty much, my whole Christian life, I was pre-tribulation rapture, so I believe there was a rapture, seven-year tribulation, and then Jesus would come back. Uh, but I've recently changed my view, and I have a video on why I changed my view with Dr. Brown in it, and now I believe in a post-tribulation rapture. So I now believe that we will go through the seven years tribulation. We will be raptured, meet the Lord in the air, which is what the Bible says, and then we'll return with the Lord as a heavenly army for the second coming of Christ at Armageddon. So that's my belief now. I have a, again, I have a video on explaining all that. Is deja vu demonic or prophetic? A rich, I don't know if it's demonic or prophetic. It's been a question that's been long debated, asked for a long time. And I can't tell you whether it's what it is. If it's a phenomenon or not, I can't tell you. I do get it quite often, but yeah, I don't know. 
Isaiah, can you put the chat on slow mode, please? Oh, it's kind of one of those things that we're, we've always had been on fast mode, so it's kind of hard to go back now. It probably would be beneficial for tonight to put it on slow mode, but I don't know. I think that we're just going to keep it. What Bible translation is the most accurate to you? Hmm. I don't know that I would be able to make a definitive answer on the most accurate. To me, I like to read or I like to study the New King James and I like to read the NLT. So pretty much the only translations I work with for the most part is the New King James in my verse by verse and my teachings and then the NLT for referencing, reading and like going through like I read the whole New Testament in one sitting. That was NLT. So that's what I prefer there. But yeah, some people like the ESV. I'm not the type of guy that's like, there's a missing word. This Bible is from the devil. I'm not that guy. I believe God's word is sovereign and God will get his, his word across. So, all right. Any, uh, any advice on those that want to witness, but are, what did that say there? Man, I'm sorry. The chat's moving so fast, but are shy. I think you said, um, ask for the Holy Spirit to give you boldness. Step out and let the Holy Spirit fill your mouth. I would just ask him for boldness because he'll definitely give it to you. Have you ever backslid? And how did you get back to God when you backslid? Really good question, Ava. By the grace of God, I'm grateful to say I've never backslid. I've never gone back. I've never slipped up. I've never turned my back on God in 11 years. I've been going after God, so I have never backslid. But if you have backslid, now's the day of salvation. Like right now, not like tomorrow in 15 minutes. Now's the day. I would repent, turn to God, cry out to him, ask him to change your heart, ask him to change your life, and ask him to give you the Holy Spirit and seek him and turn turn you back on the world and, and follow Jesus. So I definitely go for that. Okay, I left my church. Who covers me while I find another church? That's a really good question. I know I have a really hot take on the whole covering and, and having a spiritual father. Let me just say this, and I'm going to move on because I don't want to go into really big detail on this. The whole idea, and I don't want to cause a bunch of strife and contention among friends of mine and everything like that, but I, I think and I believe in my 11 years of traveling, being a part of many different churches, I'm undercovering right now, I'm under pastors right now. I think also, though, the, the flip side of that is I think we've abused covering, and I think pastors have become dictators, and they're like, you have to be under my covering or God won't bless you. But if you read the New Testament, Okay, I know I'm going to say this is a hot take here. If you read the New Testament, you're not going to see a domineering Paul saying you have to be under a spiritual covering or you're illegitimate and God will never bless you. I think there's a lot of times we abuse covering. And so I'm not a huge person like you have to have a covering or you're going to go to hell and God's not going to bless you. It, listen, be a part of a local church, be a part, have a covering. Awesome. Praise God. But if you're transitioning, if you're moving churches, I don't think there's a huge deal of whether someone's covering you or not. Okay. So yeah, is sleepwalking. And again, I can go along on that. Maybe I'll make a video on it, but I'm just not a huge fan of this whole, like you need a spiritual father. You need to have covering or you're not biblical. And we twist verses to make it say that I've read the new Testament many times. I can't find that in the new Testament. So for me, I think we've gone overboard on that. Have you seen angels and demons? Cheryl says, I have seen angels and demons both before the most vivid time. Um, for me, the angels that I've seen are like really bright lights. That's kind of how I've seen them. I, I can't say that I've seen like an angel where it's been distinctive, where it's like detailed. Now, actually, I can say I've seen angels um, that have the Bible says in Hebrews that you could be entertaining angels and not know it. When you show hospitality to strangers, for example, if you give somebody $5 on the corner asking for food, the Bible says that you can be entertaining an angel and not know it. So you can actually meet angels that are looking like people and not even know you met an angel. And I did actually feed a guy in that one time that 100% in my mind was an angel. Basically, the guy disappeared, put it, to put it plainly. And so I believe he was an angel. So I have met an angel in real life like that. But I would say like in the spirit realm, I've had visions of angels and they've just been bright lights and demons. I don't know that I've met a demon in like a physical sense, but I've definitely seen demons in the spiritual realm. I've seen demons when God took me to the second heaven for, I don't know how long it was. I went to the second heaven one time. I never want to go back. And I saw a bunch of demons throwing people off of cliffs, throwing people into fire. And God showed me that's where the war is taking place. Those are literal people being tormented by demons. Those people are on the earth. The demons are in the second heaven with all their power and everything like that. And I did saw many demons there that I could probably, if I was able to draw good, draw what they looked like. But yes, they were disgusting, foul. They were misshaped. There was no symmetry to them. Some were short, some were tall. They had long claws. I mean, they were just grotesque. So I saw demons in that vision. And then I've seen demons, like I'll see them over people and they look like dark figures. Okay. Um, is the earth flat? 
stationary according to the Bible. I do not believe the Bible teaches a flat earth. I do not believe in flat earth. I believe the earth is round. Um, not only because I believe that's what the Bible teaches, but because uh, there's a lot of ways that you could prove that the earth is round. And so, no, I'm not a flat earther and I don't believe the Bible teaches that. Okay, let me read. They're coming in fast here, guys. I apologize. How do I see God diligently while I'm working nine to five Monday through Friday? Really good question, Sadie. Here's my advice to you. Maybe you guys have heard this before. Schedule time with God. Whatever is valuable to you, you will make time for. And if you're not having time with God or you're not spending time with God, it's because you're not making time for God. So in a practical sense, schedule time with God. Put it on your calendar. You know, if you're working a nine to five, hey, I'm going to get up 30 minutes early and I'm going to spend time with God. I'm going to go to bed 30 minutes later. I'm going to spend time with God. That's an hour a day, 30 minutes before in the morning, 30 minutes at night. Get your time in throughout the day. Talk to the Holy Spirit. Engage with God. Commune with Him. Acknowledge Him. That's really what He wants is us to acknowledge Him, to praise Him, to glorify Him. And talk to Him like He's a person throughout the day. If you're driving, if you're at work, speak in tongues if you can and just go throughout your day like that. But definitely acknowledge God and schedule it. Make time. Make time. There's no such thing as I don't have time for it because we all have the same amount of time. That's 168 hours in the week, 24 hours a day. You make time for what's valuable to you. There's nobody that's too busy for God. So yes, um, do you think it's a sin for Christians to be an MMA fighter? That's a really good question, Alex. Uh, I, I would say go by your conviction, but I'm going to give my hot take again. A lot of these are going to be hot takes. And if you don't know what hot take is, it means it's a controversial opinion. Oh, my, my thoughts on MMA, on fighting, on all of that. One, I don't watch MMA because I get all crazy and get all yelling and getting too fired up and passionate about it and it's just to me it's ungodly when i do that number two again i know i know i know i'm gonna get hated for this and there is two thousand people watching and many of you are gonna be mad i just feel weird about watching two of god's creations i don't want to be all spiritual on you but i feel weird about watching two of god's creations beat each other to a to a pulp beat each other till they pass out till they tap out or till they get knocked out like I know you can twist it spiritual and say, oh, well, this, but I just don't see how that could be entertaining or that could be godly or God can look down and go, oh, I like that. That's good. I'm glad you're watching that. Two people beating each other down. So I personally do not think UFC is, is entertaining. I don't think it's uh, godly. And again, if you're like, I'm changing people in the MMA world, then praise the Lord for you. I'm not here to tell you you're going to hell. I just think there's a lot of stuff that goes into it and there's a lot of violence and it's not healthy. I wouldn't watch my daughter. I wouldn't let my daughters watch it. So why am I watching it? I mean, again, I know hot take, but yeah, that's what I think about it. What is your opinion on aliens? Oh man, I'm sorry guys. The chat is going so fast. I am trying to go through them. What is your, it just moved as I read it. What is your opinion on aliens and UFOs and how do they fit in the Bible? Ashton, really good question. I don't know because there's no solid proof of aliens or UFOs, but I will say this. The shows you watch about aliens abductions or the stories of people saying, I was in my bedroom and a figure appeared to me at night and did this to my body and whatever it was, I believe those are demons, okay? The world doesn't know what to say about demons. The doctors can't diagnose saying, oh, you have a demon. You don't need medication. You need deliverance. So they give you medication because they don't know what to do for things that are demonic. In the same way the world calls them aliens, I would call them demons. UFOs, again, I don't know that there's any definitive proof of UFOs, but they could be spirits. They could be angels. They could be demons recorded. But I definitely think... I think that the world is setting up this UFO narrative right now and NASA is getting ready to come out and say UFOs are real. I think they just did actually, but they're going to continue to because I believe when the Lord raptures this church and returns to the earth, people are going to say, oh, it's a UFO. Oh, it's aliens coming. Oh, when all the tribulation things begin to break out and all the plagues begin to get released, they're going to blame it on aliens. Think about this. Blood raining from the sky, fire raining from the sky, oceans turning to blood, all the stuff that we've taught on the channel of tribulation. People are going to say, who's doing this? And the answer is going to be, it's the aliens. NASA has been talking about these aliens. And so it's going to discredit what the Bible says. That's what I believe the narrative is going to be. And that's what I believe the narrative is. So I don't believe in UFO or aliens in the way the world does. I believe they're demonic in nature. Thoughts on blasphemous thoughts. Do I need deliverance? Uh, yes. If you're getting nonstop blasphemous thoughts that you don't want, that you're not creating, it's probably a demon. One of the main symptoms of having a demon is blasphemous thoughts in your head. So, uh, what do you think about Jehovah's Witness? I believe Jehovah's Witnesses is a, is a cult. 
is another cult and they're not Christians. And I believe it's like any other cult. It's not like, I know we have this idea like Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, all these religions are like not that bad. And then there's like Christians were right. I believe there's following Jesus, Christianity, serving God, the God of the Bible, and then there's every other false occult religion. There's not like lower brackets. Like you're either serving God fully for him and you're serving him for real, like what the Bible says, or you are in a false religion and an occult. And I believe that's what all those other things fall into. So I don't think there's like a middle ground or like, well, maybe it's okay. No, if you're reading other testaments, if you're praying to other gods, if you're believing doctrines that are essential, that are not taught in scripture, or you're, you're not believing essential doctrines taught in scripture, then you're believing another religion. Okay, again, this is ask me anything. So even if it's controversial, even if it's against what I teach, go ahead and ask me it. Uh, can you? I can't recommend churches, guys. I'm sorry to tell you, but I know you guys are asking of a lot of places. Isaiah, what courses did you take in college? I did, I got a degree in administration of justice. So we did all the classes that you have to get to administration of justice because I was going to get hired as a deputy sheriff. And then I went to Bible college and got my degree in theology. So I did get a degree in administration of justice, which I didn't mention earlier. And then I went to Bible college and got a degree in theology. So I do have both of those degrees, yes. Obviously, I never used my administration of justice degree because I ended up becoming a preacher. Um, what, do, what if your pastor does not speak in tongues or preach about it? I mean, it's not like he's not saved. It's not like he's preaching a false doctrine. I would just say, you know, he's not preaching the full thing because the Bible does talk about tongues and the book of Acts is full of tongues and talking about tongues and spiritual gifts. So, yes. Yeah. I believe where it's personalized. Where are we on the timeline of the end times? I believe we're in the last days. That is leading up to the end times, but we, I don't believe the tribulation has started yet, but I don't think we're far from it starting. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, I'm trying to read, guys. There's a lot of them coming in. Um, why do demons in my dreams always come in children's bodies? I don't know. That's really weird. I, I'm not sure why. I can't say. Yoga is demonic, yes. Is instrumental music bad if it's only beats? Ultra, I don't think it is bad if it's just beats because music, the power of music is in the lyrics. It's in the message of the music. That's what makes a, a, mu a music uh, Christian or non-Christian is the lyrics, right? It's the message portraying through the music. So unless you're talking about like beats that are made for invoking demons, which there are, I don't think instrumental music's wrong or bad if it's not Christian because how could it be Christian, right? If it's just a beat, how could you say a beat's Christian? And there's no message to it. How, do, how does the Lord speak to you? Um, through his word, through other people. He speaks to me in a still small voice. I've heard his audible voice two times in 11 years, so not very often, but I hear his voice in a whisper a lot. So I would say it's a still small voice. It's a whisper and it's just being close to the Holy Spirit, being in prayer where you could hear that voice. Can I water baptize myself? There is no reference of self-baptism in scripture, so I can't say you can. I would just ask somebody, a Christian you know, to baptize you. Because in scripture, it was baptizing each other. What is the name of your old band? Uh, I would not look it up. I think we still do have songs on MySpace. I'm like, don't look it up and then I tell you where to find the music. That's probably not very good. But it was called Ourselves Among Others. But it was not Christian, so I don't recommend listening to it. Is a tribulation happening after Jesus returns? Amber, my... my belief on it after reading the scripture is that the tribulation will start before the coming of the Lord and that he comes at the end of the tribulation, raptures his church, we meet him in the air, and then we return on white horses with him as the book of Revelation portrays. I have a video on the sevenfold spirits. Guys, again, if you ask me personal questions as well, it doesn't have to be just Bible questions. What is your thoughts on epilepsy? Is it demonic or just a health issue? Adam, I think it can be either. I think it could be a health issue or it could be demonic. You have to take it case by case. And I would definitely still pray deliverance though if you're having really bad epilepsy. Have you ever asked the Holy Spirit about a flat earth? Uh, no, I haven't asked the Holy Spirit about flat earth before. But um, it's not really something that I feel like I need to ask him because there's definitive proof that the world is not flat. So it's like asking the Holy Spirit if dogs are real. I already know dogs are real because there's evidence. I don't really have to ask him if it's real. That's my personal belief on it. What's your thoughts or view on Sozo? I don't know a lot about Sozo. I don't really ascribe to a lot of the inner healing because my think could God inner heal you? Yes. But my thinking is Jesus cast out demons and he laid hands on the sick. So that's what he did. Why would we not do what Jesus did? So I don't know the inner workings of Sozo, but that's my thought on it. Okay. I'm trying to read these guys. They're coming in really fast. What is your opinion on once saved, always saved? If somebody dies while backslidden, will they go to heaven? I believe, I do not believe in once saved, always saved. 
So I do not believe that. I believe you can be apostate, as the Bible says. I believe your name can be blotted out of the Lamb's Book of Life, as the Bible says. I believe you can turn from the faith, as the Bible describes. So to believe in once saved, always saved, is to say the branches can't get cut off, is to say you can't apostate, is to say you can't backslide, is to say your name can't get blotted out. So if you believe in once saved, always saved, there's all these other verses that you're saying can't be ha can't happen. So I do believe that the branches could be cut off. I do believe some will say, Lord, Lord, Lord. I do believe that there'll be names blotted out. I do believe that people can backslide, go turn their back on God and not be saved. I do not believe in eternal security in the sense that once you get saved, you could do whatever you want, live like the devil and still go to heaven. It doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense in scripture. It's not what Jesus taught. It's not what the disciples taught. It's not what the early church taught. And it's definitely not what I believe. If you go live a life of sin and you live in practicing sin, the Bible says you are a son of the devil. And I believe that you are not saved. What is your favorite book of the Bible? Probably my number one favorite book is the book of Revelation. And then it would probably be John and Romans. Those are probably my top favorite three. Should you do deliverance on someone you're dating? Good question, Whitney. You can, but I would recommend having somebody else do the deliverance than, the, than doing deliverance on somebody that you're dating. So it helps when you're doing deliverance to not be doing it on somebody that you're really close to or somebody that you're dating because feelings get involved and all these other things. I would highly recommend doing it on having somebody else do it than if you're dating someone. Even if it's your spouse, sometimes they don't want to divulge information. They're embarrassed or they don't want to let the demon speak out of them to get freedom because of whatever they've done. So I would recommend having somebody else do it. Okay. I'm reading. I'm answering a lot of questions, guys. I'm trying to go, you know, one minute per question. Can you baptize yourself online? What does that mean? Like, can somebody baptize you online? Uh, I don't know. It's definitely not biblical because there was no internet back then. So I would just have someone do it in person. Do you believe in spirit spouses? Yes. And I have a video on it. I do believe in spirit spouses. Okay. What is your favorite songwriter slash band? I don't have a favorite. Unfortunately, I'm sorry to say I can't name one favorite. Is mental illness real or is it just demons? I think it's both. I think there is occasions where somebody could have mental illness, certain parts of their brain missing, certain chemical imbalances. But I do think a lot of times we call mental illnesses, we call demons mental illnesses because again, we don't have a word for them and the church doesn't do deliverance in general. So we just say, oh, that's a mental illness when really they need, somebody needs deliverance. So yes, I believe in, they are physical at times, but they also are spiritual at times. And I have videos on that as well. What is your favorite movie? I don't know. I'm not a huge movie person, to be honest. I've probably watched, I don't know, three or four movies in the last 11 years. Like, I don't, I don't know. I'm not a really big movie person. I'm trying to think of a movie that I could even say I like. I like documentaries. Does that count as movies? I could watch a good documentary, but I just get bored on movies. I'm like, in, a, in like five minutes, I'm kind of just bored. So yeah, I don't really know. Have you ever heard of the city under the sea in the spiritual realm? I haven't. Um, do you think, okay, sorry, it's moving really quick. Have you seen the passion of the Christ? I have seen it. I have seen the passion of the Christ. How are you even able to read this? Janelle says, I'm just trying to read really, really fast. Have you done street preaching? I've done preaching at the park before and events outdoors, but I don't do corner street preaching. I don't do corner street preaching. Um, do you think Christians should celebrate Passover? I think if they want to, they can. Um, absolutely. But I think when we do communion, we are honoring and celebrating Passover. But are you talking about like the whole ceremony of it? Then I think you need to use, you know, if you want to, you can, but it's not definitely not required to do like a ceremony. Okay. If you were, let me see, lots of questions, guys. Isaiah, do you believe all Christians need to cast out demons to be saved? Really good question, Gabe Brooks. And the answer is no. You don't need to cast out demons to be saved. You don't need to lay hands on the sick to be saved. There's nothing you need to do to be saved other than repenting of your sin and putting your faith in Jesus. That's, that's how you get saved is you repent and you put your faith in Christ and you follow him. That's salvation. Um, I believe that salvation is by faith and it's grace. Like we, it's a free gift. We can't earn it, but I believe repentance is essential because that's what the Bible teaches. And I believe that following Jesus is essential because how can you be a Christian if you're not following Jesus? But I don't believe you have to cast out demons. You don't have to speak in tongues. You don't have to heal the sick. In my life, I'm not trying to see the least I can do to be saved. I'm trying to do as much as I possibly can in the short amount of time as possible to serve God. So I'm not thinking like what little, what least can I do? I'm thinking about like, I want to do everything that the Bible says I can do. And if the Bible says that believers can cast out demons, heal the sick, speak in new tongues and do these things, I want to do that as a Christian. I'm going to pursue it. If Paul says pursue to desire spiritual gifts, then I'm going to pursue them and desire them because I want all of it. I want all God has to offer. So yes. 
Okay. Okay, let me see. What color do you think Jesus' eyes are? I don't know, Tiffany. I don't know. I'm trying to take all the questions, guys. It's ask me anything. So if any of you have a question that's like against what I teach or controversial, go ahead and ask me. I don't mind that. What are your thoughts on the doctrines of grace? I believe there's a loose grace doctrine taught that grace says you can do whatever you want when that's not biblical. If that's what you're talking about. But I don't know what you mean by, um, by the other thing that you wrote there. Can you write in tongues? I've never experienced writing in tongues. It's definitely not a biblical reality. There's no one in the Bible that wrote in tongues that we know of. So yeah, it's not something I practice or something I teach. Do you believe certain objects in the house can have evil connotations or need to be removed? Yes, I do believe in accursed objects. They are in the Bible. There were objects in the Bible that were cursed. Cursed, I have videos on cursed items, but cursed one because God said to remove them and you didn't and cursed two because they were attached to some type of occult or some type of witchcraft or some type of magic or some type of thing like that. So items are definitely real in the spirit realm. If you look at the Ouija board, for example, many people say, well, Hasbro makes Ouija board, which is true. Hasbro makes the Ouija board. So how could that be bad, Isaiah? Because it's a vehicle. It's a tool that demons use to communicate with the, us in the natural realm. That's a tool of communication. So demons do use objects. Yes, it is in the Bible as well. But yes, Ouija boards are demonic and there are items that are demonic. Have you ever had a spiritual spouse? No. Do you fear death or losing someone close to you in your family? I don't. The Bible does say Jesus will deliver us from the fear of death. So if that's something you're dealing with, I would just pray that the Lord would deliver you from that fear. Because it's definitely something that you can, um, you can get delivered from. How do you know if you when you should move on a prophetic word you've been given? I would just, unless the Lord says don't, I would move on it. Yeah, I would definitely move on it. It's for encouraging, exhortation, building up. So I would definitely move on it. I would definitely move on it. Okay. I don't know who Edgar Case is. How do you have better discipline and have a good prayer life? Ask the Lord for help and be intentional. You're not, nothing is going to happen on accident. So you're not going to pray on accident. You're not going to read on accident. No one's going to get anything done unless you decide to do it. No one's going to do it for you. So if you're waiting around for getting one day, I'm going to wake up with this disciplined life. One day I'm going to start reading, praying and be all excited and, and gun ho. It's not, that's not the way it works. You have to be intentional about being disciplined to pray, being disciplined to read. If God is saying, start a social media page to preach, you need to start it. You need to learn to make a page. You need to learn to make thumbnails. You need to learn to edit. You need to learn to record. You need to learn about cameras. Like I spent hundreds of hours learning about cameras and lighting and algorithms and YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and Discord, like hundreds of hours learning. In the morning, I'm watching videos. At night, I'm watching videos. Why? Because God said to reach people on social media. He didn't say, here's how you do the algorithm. Here's how you make the thumbnail. Here's what camera to buy. The Holy Spirit didn't tell me what camera to buy, what lens to buy, how to, you know, what bit rate I needed to stream at, what program I needed to integrate my chat. Like he doesn't tell you any of that. He says, do this. And then you start putting intentionally putting all the pieces together. So you have to put the effort in. Like the Bible says to make every effort to be found living a clean, pure, blameless life. There's effort involved in the Christian life and nothing you do that's powerful for God is going to happen accidentally. You need to step into it. You need to make time and be intentional about it. Okay. How do I become, okay. What is a blasphemous thought? It's a thought like F God, God isn't real. I hate God. It's a thought that blasphemes God. That's what we mean by blasphemous thoughts. Is sleepwalking demonic? I can't say definitively that it is. So I, I don't think it is, but it, it could be. I mean, a demon could make you sleepwalk. But yeah, is a pre-tribulation rapture unbiblical? Well, considering I'm post-tribulation rapture, obviously I think it is or else I'd be pre-trib. So yes, I do believe pre-tribulation is unbiblical. I, it's not in scripture at all. There's not one verse that says he's going to come back before this tribulation and then he's going to come back at the end of the seven years. If you do believe that, you believe in two comings of Christ. Because the many people argue, say, well, the rapture is not the coming of the Lord. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says he comes down. So you can't say he comes down and it's not the coming of the Lord. Anyways, that's another video that I have on the channel. Um, what are your thoughts on plastic surgery? Is it bad? I personally don't believe plastic surgery is a sin. Uh, I think that if you start getting all this plastic surgery, you see people that are addicted to plastic surgery, they get like 100 plastic surgeries and they end up looking like 
plastic like a Barbie, that's definitely something wrong there. Whether it's demonic spirit, whether it's a mental illness, whatever it is making you get a hundred plastic surgeries is definitely wrong. You need to get you need to deal with whatever that is, the root cause of that. Maybe it's a spirit, maybe it's a mental illness. Um, could be many different things. But yeah, but I think if you get a plastic surgery, I don't think that it's wrong. I don't think that it's a sin. I don't think you're gonna go to hell over it. So personally, yeah, that's my thoughts on it. Stuff that we don't have verses for. I'm giving you my opinion on, okay? So please bear with, bear in mind that my answers to these questions that are not in the Bible are my own personal convictions and what I believe, but you need to go by your own personal convictions because remember, Paul said, what might be sin for one person is not sin for another person. And Paul said, you, you're you blessed. If you don't think that's a sin and you're not convicted to do it, then it's not a sin for you. So you guys got to remember that sin's not always definitive. Of course, if it's scripture says it is, it is, but things that are like this, they're not always like, this is what it is. So amen. Um, how did you find God? I encountered God at an altar January 12th of 2011. I do have a testimony. If you type in on YouTube, Isaiah Saldivar testimony, and I will do a testimony stream soon. Stop asking silly questions. Listen, maybe they're silly to you, but not silly to others. There's no dumb questions. So can we get deliverance while being pregnant? Good question, Sarah. It depends how far along you are, but I wouldn't recommend it only because deliverance can get very intense. And so it's not something that you want your body to go through while being pregnant because you you know high stress is bad for the baby and deliverance is definitely high stress when you're being delivered. So I I wouldn't do deliverance on a pregnant woman and I would not recommend doing it. So you could wait wait till you wait. Many of you have had demons for 20 30 years anyways. Wait till you have the baby and then go get deliverance. What's a conspiracy you believe? Um, what's a conspiracy that I believe? Hmm. I don't know if I should say. Let me think real quick here. I don't know. I, I can't. I don't know. I don't really know. I don't know a conspiracy that I believe. I'm not really into conspiracy theories, but yeah, I could go along a lot of ways there, but I, I don't know. I don't know that I have one offhand. Thoughts on Maddie Nottage? I don't know who Maddie Nottage is, so I can't give you thoughts on it. Christians in video games. I'm trying to become a game developer. Here's my thoughts on Christians in video games is the same as my thought on Christians in movies. Okay, video games and movies to me are exactly identical. One of them you watch, one of them you participate in, but they're both, to me, the same thing. They're both entertainment and they're both, you know, it, you're, you're using them to entertain you. I don't think that entertainment is inherently sinful. I don't think that's inherently wrong. Just like I don't think enjoying food is wrong, or I don't think hanging out at the park is wrong, or I don't think going fishing is wrong, or I don't think having a hobby is wrong. If it becomes an idol, it's wrong. If it becomes an addiction, it's wrong. If it's something that's ungodly going against your convictions, uh, just like we talk about with movies, you know, if there's nudity in it in these different topics, then of course, then it is wrong. So yeah, that's my view on video games is the same as my view on movies. What are your thoughts on making a lot of money? I think that's awesome, Zachary, if you make a lot of money. I don't think it's wrong to have money. There's nowhere in the Bible where it says it's wrong to be wealthy, be rich. You know, you say you have 10 businesses and you have, you know, a million dollars a year, $5 million a year, $10 million a year. Awesome. Praise the Lord. Sow into the kingdom of God. Help other people that don't have the finances to do the ministry work. We need rich people in the kingdom, period. Okay, this whole poverty mindset is not biblical. Do I preach a prosperity gospel? Of course not. Do I believe in a prosperity gospel that God wants everyone to be rich and that's all he cares about? Of course not. But I don't think God is one that says, no, you shouldn't be rich because there's a ton of Christians in the Old Testament that were rich and the disciples even had money. So some of them had businesses. In fact, Jesus was financially supported by business women. Go read your Bible, y'all. He was financially supported by business owners. So no, it's not wrong to have money, but it's wrong if money has you. Amen to that. Okay, I'm trying to read these. Is spirit of gluttony a real thing? Yes, it is a real thing. The spirit of gluttony is real. In fact, there's many demons you guys probably wouldn't believe are demons. Anything that can destroy your life, kill you, which gluttony definitely can, could could be a demon. But yes, there's definitely a spirit of gluttony. I've dealt with it before. Not in my own personal life, obviously. I mean, look at my wrist here. I'm skinny. But I've dealt with people that have it and cast it out of people. Thoughts on emotionalism? I think that's a little bit too broad to say. I don't know what you mean by emotionalism. But um, maybe if you... Make it more specific, I can answer that. What do you think about false prophets and teachers in the church today? I think they don't look like what you think they look like. They don't come in trench coats, but they come wearing three-piece suits and they masquerade as angel of lights. What if you never manifest during deliverance? Good question, Jasmine. Then you just pray by faith and believe that God has delivered you. If there's no manifestation, just like the woman in Luke 13, you pray, you believe that God has delivered you and you, and you move on, you keep going but there doesn't always have to be a manifestation. 
Okay, I know they're coming quick, guys. I'm trying to read as many as I can. Uh, do you believe Christians can be demon-possessed? Really good question, Rachel. I have tons of videos on the channel on this. Here's my thought on it. I don't believe possessed or oppressed are biblical realities when it comes to demons. The actual Greek word demonized implies and means to be under the power of a demon. So the word possessed is a English word and the word oppressed is an English word. The Greek word is demonized and it means to be under the power of a demon. And some say, well, the word demonized means to be possessed by a demon. That's the English translation. The original Greek is to be under the power of a demon. So I don't believe in possessed or oppressed. I don't teach it. I don't believe in it. There's confusion on it. That's why everyone's confused. Well, a Christian could be oppressed, but not possessed. That's not in the Bible. The Bible says they were demonized and then they took that translation from the Greek and they translated it into English possessed, which means ownership. And I don't believe that is the real translation. So I just say people have a demon. There's <clears throat> Jesus never cast a demon off of people. So there are only demons living in you. Demons don't live on you. So people say, well, if you're a Christian, they live on you. If you're an unbeliever, they live in you. That's not biblical. So yes, I believe a Christian can have a demon. Absolutely. Do you like horses? I grew up with horses. I don't mind them. Is homosexuality a sin? Yes. Um, Isaiah, why did you change your position from pre-trib to post-trib? Because I got challenged on my position and I realized I had no biblical backing. That's why. I had seven or eight reasons why I was pre-trib and every single one of them could be disproven and weren't strong biblically. So I changed my position. I talked to Dr. Michael Brown on stream. You can see me changing my position live on stream. Humbled myself and said, I don't want to be right. I want to be biblical. So if I wanted to be right, I would still be pre-trib, but I want to be biblical. So that's why I'm post-trib. Again, you go watch our video. There's not one verse in the Bible that says Jesus is going to come back, take us out before the tribulation. So again, that's why I changed my position. It's all in the video on why Dr. Michael Brown resists a pre-tribulation rapture. It's nothing to divide over. It's not a heaven or hell issue. Okay. Um, do you think having empathy with someone is new age? No, I don't think empathy is new age. I think being empathetic is godly. What are your thoughts on suicide? JJ vlog. Okay, so I would usually try to avoid these questions, but because the title is ask me anything, I'm going to give you my unbiased opinion on this. Again, I'm not going to give you, this is definitive scripture. I'm going to give you my opinion. I believe God judges everybody individually. I don't think there's a blanket of if you do this, you go to hell. That's it. Okay. So I believe God takes case by case individually. My general consensus. Now, of course, I know you say, well, there's a special occasion of somebody that commits suicide when they were this and they were mentally ill. I'm not talking about that. Okay. This is my Isaiah Saldivar's general consensus, consensus on the topic of suicide. Again, this is my opinion. I have to keep saying that over and over because you guys are like, well, that's not the Bible. What does the Bible say about that? I have friends that have committed suicide. I know many of you have family, have loved ones, have spouses. I want to be very sensitive. My heart breaks for you as it does. It breaks for anybody that would take their life or anybody's family that would. Or I have pastor friends that have taken their life. I have, again, it hits close to home for all of us because all of us probably know somebody that's taken their life. My general consensus in a general sense is that you go to hell if you commit suicide. That's what I got raised believing. That's what I've been taught. That's what I've believed reading scripture. And here's why I believe that, guys. I can't imagine you taking your life, standing before God in judgment, and God saying, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into your master's rest. Because that's really only, you're going to either hear depart from me, or you're going to hear, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into your master's rest. So I just have a hard time imagining. Now, again, God can do whatever God wants to do. He doesn't need Isaiah Saldivar's theology or opinion. So if God wants to save someone that commits suicide, I'm not God. So I don't, I can't give you a definitive answer. My belief is if you take your life, then you don't go to heaven. That's my belief because I believe it is self-murder. And so um, how could you commit suicide and then repent after? I mean, I, ju I just personally, that's my belief on it. And if I'm wrong, again, that's my personal. I have to just keep reiterating that. Is wanting to become an actor sin? I don't believe it's sin, Lorenzo, if you want to become an actor. Is having the same dream over and over again demonic? It depends what your dream is, but if it's a demonic dream or a dirty dream or a dream where you're killing someone, you're having it every night, it probably is demonic. Oneness or Trinity and why? I am Trinitarian. I believe in the Trinity because we see the Trinity in Scripture. Not only do we see the Trinity in Genesis, but we see the Trinity at Jesus' baptism. We see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all there, and all three of them are God equally. So that's why I believe in the Trinity. Oneness wouldn't make sense too many places in Scripture for me. So yes, I'm um, Trinity. Does um, is ho Can homosexuality be a demon? Absolutely. I've seen people, several people be delivered from homosexuality. And in fact, I'm going to be having on 
maybe this Tuesday, I'm not sure, but soon an ex drag queen on the Revival Lifestyle podcast to share their testimony, how they went from mascara to manhood. So that's going to be hopefully soon, maybe this week. We'll see. Um, do you have, uh, let's see. Lots of questions here. Are there different levels of hell? Yes, I do believe there's different levels of punishment. Some get a worse punishment, the Bible says. So I do believe there's different levels of hell. Yes. Man, guys, there's a lot of questions here. How do you go about breaking a fast? Uh, drink chicken broth. Eat something small. Eat some chicken soup. Eat something light. Do not break a fast on something heavy. Eat something light. And then wean yourself slowly off for the next few days, depending on how long the fast was. Okay, guys, I'm trying to scroll to the bottom because I have so many questions coming in. What's the meaning of feeling like throwing up when reading the word of God? It's probably a demonic spirit. That's probably what it is. What would be making you want to throw up when you read the word of God? A demon. So I'd go get deliverance for that. What about reincarnation? Is it biblical? Reincarnation is not biblical. The Bible says it is appointed for man to die once, then comes the judgment. There is no such thing as reincarnation in scripture. It is a pagan uh, tradition and a pagan principle, and it's not taught in scripture. Um, is being a feminine or a uh, man or a masculine woman a sin? I don't believe it's a sin, but if you're, if you're practicing homosexuality, then yeah, that's a sin, but I'm not sure if what your question was. I don't think that's a sin. Is birth control a sin? Not abortion. I do not believe birth control is a sin because birth control prevents you from being pregnant. It doesn't end the, um, conception. It prevents you. So like, for example, the plan B pill. The plan B pill prevents the pregnancy. It doesn't kill the baby. The abortion pill, which I'm going to probably get flagged for even saying that word. Okay, so there's that. The abortion pill terminates the pregnancy after conception. The plan B pill prevents conception. Um, birth control prevents conception. Just like if you used a condom or something else prevents conception. It's, it's the same thing. So yeah, I, I don't believe that's a sin. Can Christians be visited or see God? Absolutely. Of course, God can visit Christians and Christians can. I don't know that they can. By what sense do you mean see God? I don't know that they can see God, but they can definitely experience God. What do you think about Chris Pratt? I don't I don't have any thoughts on him. What are your thoughts on karma? Karma is a um, pagan teaching, so I don't ascribe to karma. Karma says what you do in this life will affect the next life. People think karma is like what you do now will affect you in a week. That's not karma. Karma is what you do in this life will affect the next life. So it's, it's a pagan teaching. Okay. Okay. Oh, I had a good one, man. It's hard guys. They're moving really, really quick. So it's, I'm having a hard time. Let's see. What do we do when Christian friends cancel Christian deliverance ministers? Um, there's not much you can do. We live in cancel culture. So everybody wants to cancel everybody, but here's the thing, controversy and people wanting to cancel people. It lasts very short online. So. It'll, it'll be over soon. If you were the director of Pixar, what, what would you do about the buzz? Pi if you were the director of Pixar's Lightyear, what would you do? Is that what you're saying? I wouldn't have two people kissing in it that are the same sex, that's for sure. How do I get rid of the fear of the dark? Um, Pray, I mean, I don't know, pray about it. Okay. Thoughts on, I don't know if I should say that because I know there's kids watching. Thoughts on um, oral and tattoos as a Christian. I'll just say oral because I think if you're an adult, you know what I'm talking about. Um, my thoughts on it is that it's not a sin, but there are other acts that are sin sexually, which I'll make a video on soon. I know several of my friends have made multiple videos on this, so I haven't said anything, but I think you need to go by your own personal conviction. There are people that feel convicted that it is a sin, but the Bible doesn't tell us if it is a sin or not. So you need to go by your conviction. My thoughts on it would be it's not a sin. But again, if you're convicted, it is don't. And tattoos, for me personally, a, a same thing I'll say before, my personal conviction is God has already told me not to get tattoos. So I will never get a tattoo. But you have to go by your personal conviction on that as well. I just think that if we are out, not of the world, we shouldn't be doing what the world is doing and looking like the world and acting like the world. And so... Um, that's one reason why I won't get tattoos. And for me, I won't get tattoos because I feel if there's anybody that won't listen to me because of my tattoos, I'm being a hindrance to them hearing the gospel. And I don't ever want to be a hindrance to somebody. I want everybody to hear me what I'm saying when it comes to the gospel. And so that's one reason why I will not get tattoos. 
Someone said I was an old soul. What are your thoughts? I think those term, I think it's a figure of speech, Smoke, when someone says you're an old soul, like you like older things that older people would like, but I don't think that it's like anything demonic or weird. I think it's just like you're an old soul in, in the sense that you're, you know, you like things that are old. Remember, soul is the mind, the will, and the emotion. So it's like you're old and you're, you're thinking your will and stuff like that. But I, it's just a saying. I wouldn't, I wouldn't read too deep into it. Do I need to receive a divine release from another Christian to start casting out demons? Rachel, no, you don't. You don't need anything special. The word of God has already given you power and authority. The name of Jesus is where we get our power and authority. You don't need a special anointing or anyone to specially lay hands on you um, or anything like that. What does it mean to be an evangelist? Now there's the gift of the evangelist or that we all should evangelize. And there's the office of the evangelist. So um, that's sharing the good news, reaching people. That's what the evangelist would do. That's what be, we should all be an evangelist. We should all be sharing our faith. We should all be doing the work of an evangelist, which is sharing the gospel, sharing the good news, reaching people. So yes. What is your take on ghost hunters? Ghosts are real. 100% the word ghost means spirit. So are spirits real? Yes. Are ghosts real? Yes. The Bible calls the Holy Spirit the Holy Ghost because the word ghost means spirit. So the Holy Ghost is real and demonic ghosts are real. So there are real such thing as ghosts and people that are ghost hunters. Yeah, they're going out to graveyards in places that have terrible things have happened and they're encountering demons. 100% it's real. They just don't know what to do about it. They're just they're just basically talking and countering demons. It's definitely real though. Did Jesus die for everyone or only the elect? He died for everyone, Edgar, according to the scripture. How do you speak in tongues? You receive the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit gives you your prayer language. Um, Yeah, I have a video on speaking in tongues if you want to watch it on the channel. If you have a son, what will you name him? Good question, Isaiah. I don't know what I would name him. I don't know. Hmm. I don't think I have a name picked out yet. Yet. Oh, did I just say yet? I hope my wife isn't watching. I think I just accidentally said yet. All right. Well, that was awkward. If I've taken the V word, V-A-X, will I go to hell? No, Gregory, you will not go to hell if you take the V-A-X. I know that makes people mad, but that's definitely not grounds for going to hell. What are your views on second marriages? It depends on why the first marriage ended. Did it end in sexual immorality? Did it end in death? If somebody dies, you're no longer bound to to uh, being married to them. You can remarry. If somebody commits sexual sin and you divorce, you could also get remarried. So it depends on the grounds. Do you think that Alzheimer is a demon? I don't know. I know it's a health condition. Maybe it could be a demon. A spirit of infirmity may cause it. Were you the singer or screamer? I was a drummer. Can you regain salvation? I don't know that it's called. it would be called regaining, but you can definitely come back to the Lord. If you've fallen or backslid, you can definitely come back to the Lord. Guys, lots of questions, guys. As you can see on the screen, I'm trying to get through many of them. Why Christianity and Catholics cannot un unity? Because they believe two different, radically different things. Um, Catholics believe you can pray that saints would intercede on your behalf. Christians teach completely against praying to saints or praying for saints to intercede. I know a lot of Catholics on my video said, we don't pray to the saints. We pray that they would intercede for us. To, what's the difference? You're praying to them. So we teach, do not talk to, pray to any other one but Jesus. We don't teach going to Mary. Um, we don't teach works to salvation, which many Catholics teach and believe that. The Catholic Church preaches a works-based salvation, and there's many other reasons why. But yeah, that's why I think Christians and Catholics aren't unified, because they are two different things. If they weren't two different things, they wouldn't be called Christians or Catholics. There would be no such thing as Catholics. They're, everyone would just be Christian, but there's they're different things. Is masturbation a sin? I do believe masturbation is a sin. One person said, if you can masturbate with a clean mind, a clean conscience, and nothing sexual, then it's not a sin. I still believe that if you're going to masturbate, there's sexual um, thoughts and, uh, attached to it. So I do believe it's a sin. Yes. What's your views on hospice? I don't have any specific views, Brown, on it. Can a wife deliver her husband? Yes, definitely can. But I would recommend getting someone else to deliver your spouse if possible. But if not... Yeah. Isaiah, did you hit the double kick? You know I had a double base. Come on, man. Of course I had a double kick. Um, okay, guys. This is Ask Me Anything. So I'm trying to read all of them. Is gambling wrong? I personally believe it is because we're supposed to be wise with our money. And I was a big time gambler and I'm highly convicted about gambling. So I personally think it is wrong and it is a sin. But again, go by your conviction because we don't have an exact scripture saying gambling is a sin. There's a lot of scriptures that imply it is and point to it but I can't give you a definitive verse on that. 
What made you stop believing in the rapture? Maria, I still do believe in the rapture. I just don't believe the rapture is before the tribulation because that's not what the Bible teaches. That's why. So if you watch my video with Dr. Michael Brown, you'll see exactly why I don't believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, but I still believe in the rapture. Um, the Bible literally says, guys, we will not be surprised when Jesus comes back for us. So this whole idea of that one random day, the Lord's going to come back and no one's going to expect it is not biblical. The Bible literally says explicitly, you will not be surprised at the day of the Lord. Like you're going to know the day of the Lord. The, now the world's going to be surprised by it, but we as Christians are not going to be surprised by the day of the Lord. So that verse doesn't make sense. If you believe in, um, one day it's going to randomly happen and nobody knows. Uh, let me see. Okay. So let me just read you real quick. First Corinthians. I'm sorry. First Thessalonians chapter five. Let's read the new King James. Listen very closely to what Paul says here. Okay. So this is about the day of the Lord. It's literally titled the day of the Lord. Listen to what Paul says here. But concerning the time and seasons, brethren, you don't have a need that I should write you. So you don't even need me to tell you the time and season of the Lord's return, the day of the Lord. And this is what Paul says in verse two. This is first Thessalonians five, two for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. Okay. So you know that he comes as a thief in the night for when they say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. They shall not escape. So Paul is saying, you know that it's going to come like a thief in the night, but watch what he says in verse four. Are you guys ready? But you brethren are not in darkness so that this day shall not overtake you as a thief. For you are sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those that sleep at night and those get drunk at, drunk at night. But let us be of the day, sober, taking off the works of darkness, putting on the armor of light. Okay, so this is what Paul says. Ready? In verse 4. You are not in darkness. The day shall not overtake you as a thief. Okay? So this idea that one day randomly no one's going to know God's going to come back and take us all and it's going to be this random event. Paul says right there, you're not going to be taken by surprise at the day of the Lord. You're going to know when Jesus comes back. Like you're in the light. Now the world's not because they're in darkness, but you are a child of the light. So again, I know a lot of people say, what about how do you not believe in the rapture if it's a surprise and how will Jesus said it's going to be a surprise to the world. It will be a surprise, but to us, we're going to know. And he's going to take us up as the Bible says, we're going to meet him in the air as the Bible says. And as the Bible says, we're going to return to the Lord as a mighty army. So that's the rapture. That's the coming of the Lord as one second coming, not two. If you believe in pre-tribulation rapture, you believe that he came once, died on a cross. He's coming a second time to rapture you. And then he's coming a third time at Armageddon with us on a white horses to establish a thousand year reign. So that's three comings. I, and the Bible teaches two comings. So there you go. There's your little rapture teaching. Um, will we know if our loved ones are in hell when we go to heaven? Really good question. I don't know the answer to that. Now, many people say, well, there's no crying in heaven. And the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says when the new Jerusalem and everybody, the final judgment after the white throne judgment, then he wipes away our tears. So it doesn't say right now he wipes away our tears. It says that when the final judgment after the white throne, there will be no more tears. So I don't know if you'll know or how that's going to work. I don't think that you would, but I can't say definitively. I'm loving the sermon. I'm glad, Christopher. Um... Do you believe in the Hebrew Israelite teaching? No, I don't. Yes, I know the whole rapture idea that he comes randomly. That was created in the 1800s and it was popularized by the Left Behind series. But the Left Behind series, the main actor of the Left Behind series, a month after the movie came out, renounced the pre-tribulation and said, man, this movie is not even biblical. And he was the main actor in the movie. So, okay. Is protecting your home and family with a firearm sinful. I do not believe it's sinful. I have firearms in my home. And if somebody breaks in to harm my kids, I'm going to use my firearm. So I do not believe it's sinful to have self-defense. And that's, you can read that in scripture. You can just Google is self-defense biblical and you'll find verses on that. Baptism in Jesus name or the father or the son or the Holy Spirit. I, ba I baptize in the name of the father, the son, the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus. So, um, one part of the Bible says to baptize in Jesus name. The other part says to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're all three together in one in my mind. So either one. God's not legalistic. He's not looking down saying invalid baptism, invalid baptism. We're way more legalistic than God. What do you think about weapons? Is it okay to have weapons in self-defense? Again, I believe it's okay to have weapons for self-defense. Will, will we reunite with our loved ones in heaven? Yes, we will. I believe we will for sure. We won't be getting married in heaven because the Bible says there will be marriage nor given into marriage. I have a video on that on heaven, facts on heaven, but I do believe we'll recognize our family members in heaven. Yes. 
Is Minecraft demonic? I don't know because I haven't played Minecraft to know. So I don't know. Are intrusive thoughts, blasphemous thoughts demonic? Usually, yes. What is your favorite vacation spot? Camping. Camping is my favorite thing to do for vacation. We go pretty often. I'm not going to tell you where because then you guys are going to, you know what I mean? It's going to be, maybe, I think it would be awesome to have like a huge camping trip with our community. How would we do that? I don't know. Maybe we could get like a retreat center or something. I think we could set that up. But there's a lot of us. There's 2,200 right now. So I don't know how we'd have a camping trip. What are your thoughts on Mormonism? That it's false. Okay, I'm going to scroll to the bottom again. So retype your questions. Did you look into Jacqueline, P uh, Jacelyn Hill Perry? I haven't. How are our relationship with our kids be in heaven? I think we will know they were our kids and it will be good. Yeah, definitely. I think we're definitely going to know each other in heaven for sure. What are your thoughts on wearing short pants in the summertime? Short pants. What does that mean? What does that mean? I don't know enough about the Hebrew Israelite movement to be able to voice my opinion on it. Is it really a sin being drunk? Yes. Being drunk is a sin, Jennifer. Is smoking weed a sin? Yes. Doing illicit drugs are, is a sin, for sure. Your thoughts on Beyonce? I don't have any. How do you know you've forgiven somebody? When, whenever, here's how you know. Whenever when someone says, hey, let's deal with unforgiveness, let's pray right now if God will expose unforgiveness, and their name doesn't keep popping in your head. If you have no resentment towards them, bitterness towards them, ill will towards them, it's probably that you forgave them. Remember, guys, this is Ask Me Anything. Is drinking one cocktail with food bad? I believe drinking all alcohol is wrong. Um, number one, they call certain alcoholic drinks spirits and you get intoxicated and they literally call, this is what the world calls being drunk or drinking, being under the influence. So what are you under the influence of? The only influence I wanna be under is the influence of the Holy Spirit. So if, if drinking something puts me under the influence, I don't wanna drink. Right? Anything that puts us under the influence of something that's not God is a sin, in my opinion. And I have a, a video on this that gives all the verses on why I believe drinking is a sin. Plan the retreat, brother. Amen. Can you deliver yourself? Yes, you can. It's not the pattern of scripture. It's not what the Bible says you should do as the pattern, but it's definitely possible. Can females wear pants? I do believe they can, yes. Any new merch? Uh, not right now, but I need to get some done soon. I've been trying to cast out a demon. It won't leave. What should I do? Continue to pray and fast. How many times do you need to sin to lose your salvation? Kevin, I don't think it's about losing your salvation. I think it's about turning away from the Lord. So I don't think if you sin five times, you lose your salvation. I'm, I don't teach... That. I don't believe you can just lose your salvation over one or two sins. I believe if you turn from God and rebel and s stop following him, then you're no longer saved. I don't think... Sa <sighs> it all goes back to what we think of salvation. We've been taught in America that once saved, you just get saved. It's a thing that just happens and you never lose it. I don't believe that's how salvation works. I believe we work out our salvation with fear and trembling and we're being saved. That's why the Bible says it's unto salvation. We're going somewhere. We're getting something. So I believe that it's a journey where we're walking with God, following Jesus. We die following Jesus. We are saved. Like you put your faith in Jesus, you believed in him, it's by faith, then yes, you're saved. But I don't think it's a one-time event. I don't, I don't think that scripture teaches it's a one-time thing you get and you never could walk away. And I, and I believe it's extremely dangerous to teach that, which I need to push back more on this once saved, always saved, because it's very dangerous to tell somebody they're saved, that they could rebel and live however they want and they're still saved. And it's even more dangerous to be so arrogant to think, well, they weren't really saved if they backslide. So you're telling me, you're going to tell them they weren't saved and be the judge of their salvation? So again, it's it's a double-edged sword there. When should you stop fellowshipping with other Christians when they start causing you to sin, stumble, or be lukewarm? When are you coming to Illinois? I don't know. Is yelling a sin? No. <laughs> if it is, then I'm definitely in sin because I yell. I yell when I preach. Will smoking weed send me to hell? I don't know what it, what will send you to hell, but I would say if you live a life of sin and you continue to rebel in sin, which I believe smoking weed, consuming a drug is a sin, it puts you under an influence and makes you a different person, then I believe, yes, you will go to hell if you continue in sin. That's what the Bible says. If you practice sin and you make it a practice, then you are a son of the devil. That's what the Bible says. I know it's hard to wrestle with that, but...
So I would definitely pray about that. Um, okay. Ask me anything, guys. I know there's a lot coming in. How do you know if... Okay, some of these I don't understand, so I'm not going to ask answer them. Are there levels of heaven? I don't know that there's levels, but there's different levels of reward. Yeah, some have a full reward, some have a partial reward, some have no reward. You can actually get to heaven with no reward. So there are different rewards in heaven, for sure. Thoughts on vaping? My thoughts on vaping are the same as smoking. Uh, it's bad for you, and it's um, negative. It destroys your body, so you shouldn't do it. If Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the person of God is living inside of you, which the Bible says he is, then why are you consuming something that's literally killing you and damaging your body? Someone said everything is a sin? No, but you guys are asking about smoking weed, vaping, and drinking. So yes, those are all sins. There's a lot of sins. There's a lot of things that aren't sin, but there's a lot of things that are sin. Go read the Bible. It has a huge list of things that are sin. Envy, anger, jealousy, rage, homosexuality, um, witchcraft, idolatry, adultery. Sorcery. I mean, there's a long list in the New Testament of sins. Lying. Stealing. How do you seek first the kingdom of God? You make God a priority in every day. We've been live for an hour and a half. Wow. I just looked down at the time. We've been live for an hour and a half. Is taking sleeping medicine a sin? I don't think it is. Is taking medicine a sin? Uh, not if it's prescribed to you and it's to do something. Then no, I don't think it's a sin. Um, what are your thoughts on Corey Miner? I don't know him enough and I've only seen skimmed clips of his videos that he's made about me and I don't obviously I don't care for him because I don't agree with a lot of stuff he teaches so that's my pretty much my only thought but again I've only skimmed the videos he's made about me and um, my opinion is that him and many other guys use our name and my name for views and clicks and if you go to their other videos where they're not talking bad about somebody or calling somebody out or exposing somebody they don't have hardly any views and the moment they tag people and call people out and heresy hunt they get tons of views so i think a lot of it is motivated for views on a lot of the channels that are heresy hunting or call people out constantly or constantly saying this person's a false teacher that person's a false teacher so yeah is junk food a sin? It hurts the body. Uh, I don't know that it's a sin, but I think gluttony is a sin. But I really don't care for any channel that's constantly calling people out by name, personally. So it's not just um, Corey that you're asking, but any channel that does that. I don't think it's healthy. And I don't want to build a community of people that are just toxic when it comes to constantly bloodthirsty to call people out. That's not a community that I want to be a part of or build. And if you want to see what that community looks like, go to the comment sections of guys that do that a lot and see how toxic their followers are. Uh, go to my video on once saved, always saved. And I, I give all the ones that you're asking about turning away from God. Okay. How can I start rewards in heaven? Doing things for God, being obedient to God. Isaiah, are you affiliated with NAR? Uh, no, I don't know what NAR is. I think NAR is something people have made that don't believe in the gifts, don't believe in the move of the Holy Spirit. So basically what happens is anybody that believes in is charismatic, which means you believe in the gifts of the Spirit and you practice them. Anyone that believes in spiritual gifts, deliverance, healing, revival becomes NAR. And so they label you New Apostolic Reformation. It's, it's a made up word um, that I don't agree with or believe in for that matter. So no, I'm not part of NAR or around or affiliated with people that are NAR. But for random people on the internet to be able to call you false or NAR to me is just very cringe. It's not what it's not the way the Bible works. Or what the Bible teaches when it comes to spiritual authority or anything like that. Um, okay, now you guys are all asking me what I think about different YouTubers. I'm not going to go into detail because I already know it's going to get clipped. They're going to watch it and all that. And I don't want people... It feels bad when people talk bad about me. So I don't want to give bad and negative opinions. I'll keep my thoughts to myself on some of these people you guys are asking about. How many times do you need a sin to lose your salvation? I already answered that. Is loneliness a sin? No, I don't believe it's a sin. Um, are ghost boxes demonic? Yes. Ghost boxes, if you're using that to communicate with demons, are absolutely demonic. A sin. What are the levels of angels? I have a video on the different ranks of angels. Is getting earrings as a male a sin? I don't believe it is. Uh, let's see. We'll probably go a few more minutes here, guys. There's so many questions still coming in. I'm trying to answer as many as I can. 
What is your favorite color? Uh, black and white together? I don't know. White? Is that, a, is, that, is that an answer? I think my favorite color is white. Is white a color? I think white's the absent, absent of, absence of color, right? But yeah, white's my favorite color. <laughs> Weird, right? Do you play drums at the church now? I don't. I did for years, played for our worship team, but I don't anymore. Is playing video games a sin? I already said that. It's, it's the same thing as watching movies. It depends what you're playing, what you're watching. When did God make angels? God made angels before he made mankind and before the Bible records. So we don't know, but we know he made them before he made the earth. Why do people cry in God's presence? There could be many reasons why you'd cry in the presence of God. If God's changing your heart, changing your mind, touching you, healing you, delivering you, there's a lot of reasons why you can cry. Um, let's see. Did you watch your chosen series? If so, what were your thoughts on it? I did watch it and I did very much enjoy it. And if you guys want, I will invite the director, Dallas Jenkins, on the podcast. If you guys would want me to um, interview him and ask him hard hitting questions, because I know some of you think it's false. I would, I wouldn't mind inviting him on the podcast. But yeah, I did watch the chosen. I, I did really, really, really enjoy it. I loved it. Oh man, I had a really good one that I missed. Do you know, uh, let's see. Do you know anything about octopus spirits? No, I don't. Do you think the Antichrist is alive today? I don't know. I don't know. Do you know Rod Pickens? Oh, we talked one time through a mutual friend, but I don't really like know him. How did you meet your wife and how did you know she was the one to marry? So I met my wife. She got saved about a month after me in our revival. And I knew that she was the one because actually God spoke to me probably as audibly as you can get that she was going to be my wife. We were in Bible college together and the pastor said, go find somewhere and don't get up until God speaks something to you. And I laid down on my face and started praying. And I heard God speak as clear as you could imagine saying, Alyssa is your wife. So yes. And then we have a whole story, which maybe one day we'll share on stream. Which spiritual gifts did God give you? So Jose Molina, if you've watched my teaching on spiritual gifts, I believe spiritual gifts are, well, I don't believe it. The Bible teaches it. And I believe it, that they're manifestations of the spirit. So I'm not one that teaches, oh, you get a gift and you have it forever. And it's just, it is what it is. I believe that they are manifestations of the spirit and they manifest for different times for different reasons. So you may need a gift of prophecy and the spirit can manifest the gift of prophecy. Because remember, it's the same spirit that gives all the gifts out and distributes them and manifests them. So you have all the gifts essentially in you because you have the Holy Spirit, but they manifest at different times for different reasons. So you may manifest the gift of prophecy. You may manifest the gift of healing. You may manifest the word of wisdom, word of knowledge. So that's kind of my take on the, the gifts of the Spirit. They're like tools in a tool shed. You use them when the Holy Spirit would, would desire you to use them or when you'd walk in them by faith. Yeah, that's how I would say. Isaiah, you had Shane Eidelman on your channel. Would you ever come to uh, the, his church? Westside, is it Westside Christian Fellowship? He did He did ask me if I would consider coming this year. And the problem is I'm fully booked and I don't know what I'm going to do next year. So I would consider coming, just not this year because I am beyond fully booked this year. And I don't know what's going to happen for next year. I'm praying about slowing down next year and just doing the live and the content because uh, traveling takes a lot out of me and it's a big sacrifice. So I don't know, we're gonna see what happens next year, but I'm not committing to anything next year. So yeah, and I'm full this year, so I'm not really taking any bookings. Thoughts on when pastors say they saw Jesus physically? I don't know. Um, I, I don't think that's biblical because Jesus hasn't come back yet and he's in heaven at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. So it's definitely not biblical, but can God do whatever he wants? Yeah. Does it go against scripture to say Jesus is on the earth? I mean, who are we to say God, what God can and can't do? So I, I don't know. I don't, I really, I have mixed feelings on all the whole, I saw Jesus or I saw, you know, Jesus physically walking and stuff like that. I have, I have mixed feelings on it. But I, I'm, I'm cautioned to say, no, this can't happen because again, God can do whatever he wants and it wouldn't be violating his word to appear. I mean, he literally is God. And it's sad how arrogant a lot of Bible teachers are to say everybody's false when, you know, who are you to tell God what he can do? All right, guys, I'm going to take like one or two more and we'll do these more often because we're an hour and almost 40 minutes in and I want to, I'm just going to hang out and talk for a bit here after. Okay. How do you feel about being a secular music artist and being a Christian? Really good question. My view is if you are a Christian, why are you producing secular music, right? Music has power. Music 
you're either for him or against him in music and lyrics so if you're a christian your whole life should be about glorifying god and so if you're creating secular music calling yourself a christian i would just really question who you're really following because you're basically saying you work it's basically you're on our team but you're running the ball down the opposite side of the court you're basically scoring in the other team's basket but you say you're on our team but you're scoring for the other team that's what i think about christians that produce secular music i, I think it's an ox honestly i think it's an oxymoron like to be a christian making secular music to me doesn't make sense hot take i know but that's my opinion on it can you break someone else's soul tie for them no i don't believe you can um do you believe you to girls in you do you believe yo you to, i don't know what that says there what is deliverance it's the casting out of demons is what we call deliverance um the casting out of demons is a new light your movie bad for kids i would never have my kids watch a movie where there's a same-sex kiss period so yeah i would not recommend any kids watch the new light your movie because there is a same-sex kiss in it so to me boycott it how do you know when a demon is uh when do you know a demon is manifesting i have a video on tons of ways you know but growling foaming at the mouth heavy yawning laughter um screaming another person's voice talking out of you those are just common ways avoiding eye contact those are all ways to tell do you believe the gifts are with without repentance uh yeah the gifts of callings of god are without repentance lots of questions guys really good stuff well how about a lust i have a video on that check it out are you still friends with your old bandmates uh no i haven't talked to them in years several of them came to our revival in the beginning but i haven't talked to them since then if i'm a christian i make a song about a lamborghini is that bad um i mean you either you're glorifying god or you're glorifying you know something else so to me again I, I i don't believe christians should even listen to secular music let alone make it the devil was has instruments in his body so it's obvious that's what he's going to use i have a video on should christians listen to secular music if you want to watch it okay we're going to take one more question and then we're going to hang out the chat for a bit and then we're going to get off I can hear actual voices of spirits. Um, one more question here. Let's see, one more. Let's find a good one here. Some of these I'm just not answering because they're I can't really answer them. Do I need people with me to do deliverance? You don't. You can do it by yourself, but I recommend having people with you. Uh, do you like songs from Jonathan Ogden? Yes, I do like Jonathan Ogden. I do like his stuff. Yes. How do you feel about remarriage? Uh, if it's uh, if it's along the confines of Christ of what the Bible prescribes to get remarried, then it's okay. But if you're getting remarried and it's you know against Scripture, then no, it's not okay. You answer three questions. I know it's hard. It's hard to end. I have a video on grieving the Holy Spirit. If you want to check it out. Guys, be patient with me. I'm there's literally 2000 people right now on and a lot of questions coming in and I'm one person. So I'm I've been answering questions for an hour and 40 minutes now. So I'm doing my best here. All right, guys, really really awesome good stuff. I think I'm going to call it there. I'm going to hang out with the chat here for a bit. So if you want to hang out, you can. If you want to give, I will put the links to give on screen and right now I'm just going to read the chat and hang out with you guys. So here you go. I think it was a great time. We went for an hour and 40 minutes. Oh wait, that's not right. Hold on. Um, there you go. If you want to see the links, the giving links are there. Yes, an hour and 40 minutes of answering questions as fast as I can. We did a lot of questions. We'll do this more. I enjoy just talking to the chat and hanging out with you guys. I actually love this. Just reading the chat and hanging out with you guys is really, really good time. So now I'm reading more questions. So I guess we're just not ending. We're just going to hang out with the chat. But let's talk, guys. There you go. You can give monthly. If you're not a monthly donor, pray about giving. Let me just say thank you to a couple of these donations here. Steven Laborde, thank you so much. If you guys didn't know, all of our content is free online as well. So thanks for all your hard work and helping us learn deeply the word of God. Thank you, Steven. Sharice Higgs said your videos help me daily. Thank you, Sharice. Cora, thank you. 
Athena uh, Chiaya said, will you, uh, will we know if our loved ones are in hell when we go to heaven? I don't know, Athena. I don't know. Joseph Arquit said, may God bless you and keep you on his path. Thank you, Joseph. Disciples Remodeling, thank you. Said, love, love y'all. Really miss the live streams. I always catch the replays. Love tithing to you guys. Miss y'all. Disciples Remodeling, we love you guys. You guys are OGs. You've been here since the beginning. I appreciate you, Disciples Remodeling. Thank you for the donation and the tithe. Thank you. Rosa uh, Zagwire said, thank you. God bless. Thank you, Rosa Anonymous. How do you join the map? I'd like to get on. Go to my website and apply. There's a deliverer app. It's an application. Apply and you can get on. Elijah, thank you, brother. Can demons walk on the earth in human form? Yes, Elijah, I believe they can. Thank you, Elijah. I believe demons can shapeshift. Merlin, thank you so much. Ride Soul. These types of streams are tight. Definitely should do more of these often. Love you, bro. You're a legend. God bless. Thank you, Ride Soul. I will do them more. Thank you. Jeremy Split, thank you. So thanks for answering our questions. Bless you. Thank you, Jeremy. Esther Salgado, so thank you for your dedication. God willing, my family and I will be driving to see you next Friday. Esther, I hope to meet you there. I hope to meet you there. Yes, guys, I still do have the effects on. Oops, that's the wrong effect. Wait, what's going on? There we go. Thank you, Esther Salgado. I appreciate you. You're a legend. Thank you. Um, Christian rap, good or bad? I like Christian rap. I think Christian rap is good. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you want to donate on Venmo, you can. Let me load the Venmo here. There's your Napoleon Dynamite music. While I load the Venmo, that's my elevator waiting music. If you are on hold today for two hours, I'm sorry if I'm scarring you. Okay, Nick Travis, thank you. Said sewing in the ministry, thanks for all you do. Lucy Zab, thank you. Said dinner. Stephanie Garcia said blessings to you in the ministry. Carissa McCarty said God bless you. Thank you for answering all the questions. You have so much patience. Thank you, Carissa. I appreciate you. I was guys trying to answer even like edgy questions because it was asking me anything. So I wasn't trying to just answer the easy ones. Mm -mm -mm. Everybody's still asking questions. How do you know if you have a demon on my channel? I have a video on how to know if you have a demon. Guys, I will say this. A bunch of these questions you guys are asking, I have on my channel. So if you type them in on my channel search, you'll find full videos on them. I'm pretty much answered most questions I can think of and made videos about them. Do you prefer Venmo or PayPal? Either, but Venmo has no fees. Everything else has fees, but Zelle and PayPal. I'm sorry, Zelle and Venmo has no fees. Everything else has fees. You have a lot of patience, thank you. Someone said test. Everybody's still asking questions, it's all good. Elijah, thank you. Says martial arts a sin? Um, I don't think so, it depends on what you're doing though. If you're bowing to gods and doing all that, then yeah, but it depends. I can't just say yes or no to that because there's like a thousand different types of martial arts. Does anyone worship like David anymore? I don't know. If you're in a marriage previously, can you remarry? There's biblical grounds for remarriage. Two that I can name off the top of my head are if your spouse dies or if your spouse commits sexual sin and divorces you, then you can remarry. What do you think about Derek Gilbert Bucks? I've, I don't know who Derek Gilbert is. I'm still answering questions here, so I guess we're just gonna answer questions till I end tonight. Wish you ran out of campsite though on the real. That would be fun. I really do want to hang out with all of you. I do want to hang out with all of you. Really, 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 I do. I think it would be cool. But unfortunately, there's a lot of you. But I still, I still do want to hang out with all of you. Hold on, let me just change, move something here. Oh wait, is that not gonna let me move? Come on, let me move. I need, I need more stream ideas, guys. I want to do something new. I want to do another challenge like I did with the reading for 12 hours or whatever I did. But I just don't know what to do. But I need some new stream ideas because I want to try some new stuff for stream. I do want to try some new stuff for stream. How did you deal with losing all your friends once you got saved? I prayed a lot. And I, I made new friends that were Christians. And a bunch of my friends got saved. But yeah. Lots of time in prayer and connecting with people at church that would, you know, help me. Is there a stream ideas tab in Discord? No, but I will post a community tab on YouTube for stream ideas. That would be good. How's your family doing? They're doing good. They're doing awesome. Thank you. Does God speak as a thought? Absolutely. The still small voice of God sounds like a thought. Yes. Does the Bible warn us? 
Uh, oh, I missed it. Warn us of and expose false teachers. The Bible warns us of false teachers, but the Bible doesn't say spend your entire um, YouTube page exposing everybody that you think is false. So no, to have a ministry where all you do is try to expose false teachers is not a biblical, biblical thing. At least there's no one in the Bible that did their whole ministry doing that. Whitney Nyland, thanks a lot. Said, thanks Isaiah, you look tanner than normal. Maybe just me, have a great night. I am very tan. I'm actually probably more tan than you think, but I have white lights on because I've been outside. I'll probably be tan all summer because I spend most of my time outside. Thank you for your ministry, Isaiah. It changed my life. Thank you, Chris Lynn. I appreciate you. Yes, I have my voice changer right, right here. here. Here you go. Just for you. There you go, emoji. I got you. Are you Mexican? I'm half Mexican, half Italian. Half Mexican, half Italian. Does God want you to feel more of him the deeper you go? I think so. If you draw near to him, he'll draw near to you. How old am I? I'm 31, I think. I'm not sure. I'm either 30 or 31. I think I'm 30. Oh, wait. I think I'm 31. My question is, how are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. I've been here since December of 2020. Oh, gee. How about this? How about this? Type in the chat. How long you've been here? Type in the chat. How long you've been here? What was the month and what was the year that you started following? And for all of you that say I have a squeaky high voice, here you go. Go ahead, type in the chat. Go ahead, type it in the chat. Month and year. Month and year. Don't tell me the time, like five months, because I, I can't calculate it that quick. All right, June 2021, May 2022, November 2021, 2020, 2020, January 2022, March 2021, July 2021, 2019, let's go. Three years, May 2022, May 20, lots of May 2022. Wow, welcome, welcome. Today, welcome, Cynthia. Welcome. Sorry for scaring you with my chipmunk voice. August 2016, let's go. March 2022, since 75,000 subs, let's go. September 2020, October 2021, a lot of 21 and 22. Yesterday, okay, let's go. Man, a lot of, look at the chat. Look at all the 2022s. Where's all our OGs at? Come on, I need somebody in here January 2020. Where are you? Since COVID started, let's go. Let's go. Have you been applying sunscreen? I don't know. I don't really use sunscreen, to be honest. November 2020, let's go. Come on. October 2020, is that the lowest I got? Going once, going twice. May 2012. Okay, no one's going to beat that. Adrian Ledesma, let's go. 2012. I don't know if it like... Okay, for all of you following... Okay, 2020. If you started following in the beginning of 2020, does it trip you out too how far God has brought the ministry? Like, I look at just the followers, the numbers, the reach, the community, the deliverance map, and it just, it's incredible all that God has done. Does that like blow your guys' mind too, or is it just me? 2019, let's go. March 2020 or February, I can't remember. Let's go. February, March of 2020. Let's go. March 2020. That's for you, Aaron. Okay, that's enough. All right, no, stop, stop. Sorry, I, I can't get them to stop clapping. The crowd just loves it. I don't know what to do. September 2020. Today, Lori. Hello. Lori, we stream every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday, and we upload every single day. Lori, hi. Glad that you're here. Hope that you come back. Hope I don't scare you too much. My wife has been following since April 2011. True story. When my wife first came to our revival, she thought I was so annoying. She's like, who is this guy in the corner of the living room screaming at us? Because I was in the corner of my living room preaching. And yeah, April, January, February, March. Yeah, April 2020 was when my wife first heard me preach and thought I was crazy. And then look at now. She likes me now. Would you look at that? Do you watch The Chosen? I watched every episode on stream. March 2022, December 1st, 2021. A lot of 2022s, praise the Lord. But it does make me kind of sad, <laughs> to be honest with you guys. Like, we have about, you know, 2,000 people in here and a bunch of you are 2022. Where's all my 2020, 2021? What did I do? What did I do for you to leave? 
you know, streaming, we have live, we've had lives with 10,000, lives with 5,000, lives with 1,000, live streams with 800, you know, it's just all over the place. Who knows? I just got to keep staying faithful and seeking God. CJ, thank you. You said much love. March 2020, okay. Summer, man, okay, there is a lot of 2020. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'm sorry. There's a lot of 2020. I appreciate you guys. June 2020, list. Thank you. For 2020 OG, Susan, thank you. And on Facebook, come on now. I mean, if you're still, if you're on Facebook and you've been here since 2020, you're a real legend. January 2020, Miranda, thank you. What's your diet like? Uh, it's, it's like eating once a day. That's pretty much what it's like. Yes, I've watched every episode of The Chosen on stream. Okay, there's a lot of 2020. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just wish... Uh, I just wish everyone would stay. I just wish... Imagine if everyone just stayed. We'd have like 30,000 people right now. Not even that it's about having that many people on. But I just like all of you. And I, it makes me sad when someone's here for like a year and then they just disappear. No, you know, it's all love. But... You guys should just stay here forever. Like when I'm 80, you should be like, I've been around since 2020. Back in the day. I mean, I do. Bob Larson's in his late 70s, early 80s. He still live streams. Like, so why can't I do this when I'm 80? I don't know. Why can't I? What's what's the reason why I couldn't? How much do you get paid to preach at a church? I usually don't get paid anything. Majority of the time, I give the money back to the church. Praise the Lord for that. And that's a blessing to be able to do. Imagine YouTube in 40 years, right? I'm like, welcome to the broadcast. We're all like old. We're all like in our 70s and 80s. You guys are all watching me like from on the iPad connected to your walker. Hopefully by then, I mean, all right. I wish there, I, I want to say there's going to be flying cars by then, but there's a high chance there's not like, I mean, we thought, we thought 20 years ago, we were going to have flying cars by now. And we still have those doors that go in circles that you get stuck in, like, and, you know, you still can't get Chipotle steak without half of it being fat. I mean, come on, how far have we really come? Listen, if you go to Chipotle, I had Chipotle today, so it's fresh on my mind. If you go to Chipotle, can somebody please tell me in the chat, why is it when you order steak at Chipotle, 50% of the time it's all fat and 50% of the time it's amazing? Can I get a one in the chat if that's not the truest thing I've said tonight? Okay. How is that possible? That, that is so true. If you order steak at Chipotle, that is so true. 50% of the time, it's all fat. 50% of the time, it's amazing. I just, I'm just speaking just straight facts here. Thank you. I'm not the only one. And also, they charge you like $14. And, and, all right, enough, enough. I'm just like, when I watch them scoop the meat, all I can think about is, are you paying for that? Because you're scooping it like you're, you're having to pay per scoop. Like, just hook it up. You're not even paying. You're, you're getting paid to scoop the meat. Why are you giving me just this much meat when I paid $18? Okay, I'm done. Anyways. What do you think about Minecraft? That's been the question of the night. I don't know. I've never played Minecraft. I don't know about Minecraft. So I can't give an opinion on it. Because I want to say something. Then you're going to go delete your kid's Minecraft world. And then you're going to say, Isaiah told me it was bad. And I don't even know what I'm talking about. So no, I, I don't give opinions less. It's, you know, right? Thank you. Okay, now we're now we're getting somewhere with the, with the Chipotle. Somebody please tell Chipotle. Now listen, Chipotle does sponsor streams and influencers. So if they if they want to, I'm not, I'm not gonna say no if they want to send me like a golden burrito card or something. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? I'm just saying, if you're not paying for it, why are you, so, why are you skimping me here? Isaiah, you're awesome. Please read the book of Isaiah. Thank you, Tracy. Oh, streaming challenge. Read the book of Isaiah. I want to do some, I want to do, okay. I want to do a stream or a video that's like a challenge that's like groundbreaking. That's something so, no one's ever done before, but I don't know. But I do want to do something like that. We're watching from South Africa, welcome. We're going to get off soon. We're going to get off in five minutes, okay? Two hours. Look at us back in the day. We're like, uh, look, not look at us back in the day. Look at us streaming this long like back in the day. That's what I meant to say. Oops. 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 Didn't mean to do that. There you go. Entire Bible in one stream? How long is that? 60 hours? 
Excuse me. Caleb Brown said, much love. Happy early Father's Day. Thank you, Caleb Brown. Do you drink coffee? No, I don't. Um, see you in Orlando. I can't wait to see you. I've been here since the reverse Mohawk. I'm glad you've been here that long. I can enjoy your really, I can tell you enjoy doing this. I do enjoy this. I love talking to you guys. What year is Jesus coming back? Personal opinion? I don't know. I have no clue. I have no clue. Probably soon though. I don't know. Whitney Nyland said, we appreciate you staying with us. Thank you, Whitney. I appreciate you. I need to do like a crazy challenge here, guys. I used to go to British Columbia all the time. I've been there like 10 times. Can you show the bobblehead? I got you. I can't say no to that. There you go. Hater's gonna say it's fake. I am from Central California. Who even wants flying cars? Me! Okay, I'm so sorry. I know there's people that are just jumping in for the first time ever because we're live like all the time. And this is what they're seeing when they jump in. Everyone's like, you should go listen to that preacher. He's so on fire. And this is what they jump into. So I'm sorry if that's you. Okay, I apologize. But I will say this. One girl was watching my videos. She said, I, I couldn't stand it. I was so angry what you were saying. She wouldn't watch me. And then one day she stumbled back on like they do. And she saw me telling jokes and doing my voice changer and doing my cricket sounds and doing my laughing sounds and my boo sounds and doing all my little things I do. And she said that she realized I was like a normal person in human and she thought it was so entertaining and that, and she started watching everything and now she's watched like all the videos and stuff. So, so it does reach some people. Some people do like the entertainment. Some people do, it does engage them. It doesn't, oh, he's human. He's a normal person. So it does help when we are normal. You know what I'm saying? And it doesn't have to be all serious. I mean, we just answered questions for an hour and 40 minutes. Let me have fun for like five minutes. All good. You're so funny. Thank you. And look at the screen. Go ahead. Okay. Look at the laughing emoji. So maybe, maybe you don't like it, but some people do. Okay. And if you don't like it, then just click off. We still love you. You look like Nick A30. I've heard that a million times. I've heard that a million times. They say I'm a Christian Nick A30. Chipotle, get, what are you guys doing over there? Can someone please tell me what they're putting in the food to make it cost so much money? Like, what kind of meat? Are those cows bred on the moon? I mean, why is it so expensive? I don't understand it. Have you ever met a high-level Freemason? No, I don't think I have. Chipotle, Chipotle. Chipotle. Cheap Ole. Oh, cheap. Okay, I see you. And then, oh yeah, we don't even want to get into gas prices. I think you have a great sense of humor. Thank you. When are you coming to India? I don't know. Hopefully someday. When you go to Chipotle, do people recognize you? Um, I miss the Bible question challenges. I know, mom. I miss them too. The problem is why we can't do Bible challenges anymore if you guys didn't know. The reason why we can't do Bible challenges anymore is because when I say type the answer, all of the comments freeze my screen. It's too many comments at once. So I know bad, good problem to have too many people commenting, but it, yeah, when there's this many people commenting at once, it freezes the screens. The program I use that processes YouTube and Facebook comments, they're unable to keep up with the thousands of comments that come through. They can't refresh them. So yeah, that's why we can't do Bible trivia like that. What did somebody just say that I missed? Um, hmm. I live in central California. I missed something. I don't remember when. Wait, I'll go back up and find it. Quiz. Oh, I can't find it. Anyways. Oh, man, I wanted... Oh, do people... Yes, okay. Not a weird flex. Again, not a humble brag. But it is weird since we started online. Get We do get recognized. And I, I love getting... I love getting recognized because I love talking to you guys. We get to pray with people. Um, not I love getting recognized because it like strokes my ego and I'm like, oh, I'm famous, but I like getting recognized because when I get recognized, I get to talk to you guys and meet you guys and be like, hey. So yeah, we do get recognized a lot and we get to talk to people a lot and we get to pray with people and it's it's a good time. Obviously, I want to meet all of you. So, But yeah, it is weird getting recognized all the time now because that never happened before 
we did the, started in 2020 or 2000 and in 2019. You said you're getting off in five minutes. Ray, thank you for reminding me, bro. You must want me to get off because if you would have never reminded me, I would have stayed on. But now I'm obligated to get off. Do a live stream outside. I've thought about that. Mm -mm -mm. Can you deliver an unbeliever? Ugh, I wouldn't. You have a hard time. Christian Kahoot tournament. I know I need to learn how to set that up. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. When are you preaching again at Life Song? July 31st. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, do you watch videos of YouTubers calling you out or addressing you? Usually, no. I'll usually either skim them or not watch them um, because I can't keep up. I'm trying to like do what I'm doing. I don't have time to sit and watch videos of people saying Isaiah is false because he believes in casting out demons. He believes in speaking in tongues. He believes in the Holy Spirit filling people. He believes in miracles. Like I just, I'm not, I don't have time to watch that to be honest with you. I don't, I don't want to give them even that pleasure that I've watched the video. So I usually just don't. When we have Steven Bankars on, whenever he starts doing videos again in live, he said he'll come on. So we had like a three hour talk on the phone one day. He's an awesome guy. So yeah, Joshua Luna, thank you. I've been listening to your content since you started on Revelation. Thank you, bro, for being a vessel. I want to encourage you to check out Curry Blake. Anyway, God bless. Thank you so much, Joshua Luna. Appreciate you, brother. But yeah, um, the right way to go about trying to bring correction to somebody is not making a YouTube video about them for the whole world to see. It's usually going to them like the Bible says. So um, sending them a message, sending them an email, trying to go through somebody else or contacting them. And then if you can't, then do whatever you want to do. But yeah, it's not... It's not um, biblical that you just try to blast people on with, with youtube videos it's just low-hanging fruit when your whole channel is you blasting other youtubers um don't forget to talk about fake accounts thank you mom yes guys there's many 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 fake accounts on instagram i'm going to show you my only real instagram so no i will not ask you to whatsapp me no i will not ask you to email me this is my only real instagram account i'm about to show you right now okay this is my instagram account any other account i want you to notice the spelling okay look at the top do you see that? The spelling there? Isaiah Saldivar. There's no underscores. It's not spelled wrong. That's my account right there. That's my only account. 88.5 thousand. 1,400 posts. That's my only real account. If you sent money to another account, you got scammed. I'm sorry to say it. Guys, you got to stop falling for these scammers. I will um, hopefully get verified soon, which is a blue check mark. But I'm just telling you guys, please do not send money. Do not follow emails. Do not go, if they have broken English, it's not me, okay? Okay. Uh, Joshua Luna, I did read your dono. I read it. I just read your whole dono, bro. So I've been listening to your content since you started. Study on Revelation. Thank you, bro, for being a vessel. I want to encourage you to check out some Curry Blake. Anyway, God bless brother love from Santa Angelo, Texas in Jesus' name. I just read that. I just didn't read where it was from because I don't like to give up people's, you know, place where they're from, but I definitely read it, dude. But I just read it again since you told me, so I got you. All right, guys, I love you. I'm gonna get off here. I'm way, I went way long. I love you guys. I'm size small shirt. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. I will see you guys on Monday night. So Monday night and then Tuesday night podcast. Love you guys. Good night, goodbye, sleep well. Thank you. There you go. There you go. For those of you that love that little sound effect there. Good night, guys. Bye. Love you. See ya. Goodbye. Love you. Have a good night. Thank you, guys. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Thanks for being here. Do the chipmunk Our voice one more time. I got you. Good night. We'll see you on Monday. Good night. Love you guys. Glad I can make a couple of you laugh. God bless y'all. Sleep well. Thank you. Good night, guys. Good night. Goodbye. See ya.
June 24th, San Bernardino. Have a blessed night, y'all.